Hey everyone, I just want to make sure that you're putting the finishing touches on your research paper this week. So this video is just going through some of those little last minute things that we um, usually talk about in class when we're approaching um, the final revision stages of the research paper. So uh, I just have a research paper here that I, I wrote kind of recently for my Akron class. Um, just remember that when you do your title page that your name and the university or college is listed there on the first page and um, and here I just pulled up the example on Purdue OWL but so your name uh, the name of your college or university I think I can zoom this in a little uh, and then you have the name of the course which would be um, you could just say composition to um, my name, your professor's name, and then the date. So this is uh, APA 7. All right, so we've been used to APA 6. APA 7 has some slight changes. You're not going to lose points if you use APA 6, but if you want to um, make sure that you're keeping up with the latest trends, um, and then when you go to college next year and you're expected to write, if you're expected to use APA, you'll use APA 7. So that's why my title page, wait, let me find it again, um, is formatted as such. Okay, um, so then your header then is going to have the name of your paper on the left and then the name or the page number on the right. Now with APA 6 I had you guys check this box for a different first page so that you could do the running running head and then the name of your paper um, but the there it goes um, which is fine. If you do that, it's fine. You won't lose any points or anything like that. Um, but APA 7 has actually made it a little bit easier. And now with APA 7, we don't have to check this box. We don't have to have a different first page. You can just simply have your title at the top and then the page number. When you do the page numbers, go to insert page numbers and then choose this option and that will automatically number all your pages. So with the new APA you don't need that running head which is actually easier. So whichever method you choose um, either one will be correct for this paper. On your first page of your paper make sure that you have your title centered and listed there. You won't have, there's something I had to do for my paper, so you won't have that introduction. Your paper will look something like this. Um, title and then the next line will be indented to where you begin your essay. Um, do some control finds. So remember um, I like to have you do control F for words like vague words like thing, all right, so I do have the word thing in here, but this is part of a quote, so I'm not going to change that. And do do also a control F for, okay, so there's a, there's a anything there. I could probably change that. Um, stuff, we never want to see words like stuff. We never want to see words like gonna and wanna, all right. Um, words like... I think. Um, try to avoid these phrases. Now I do have an I think in my essay but it's part of a quote so I'm quoting somebody I interviewed so that's that's okay I'm gonna leave that in there and again here it is again but it's part of a quote. So any I think I believe we don't want those it's filler okay we don't want filler. I also want you to look for the word you. There shouldn't be any you in this paper unless you're doing something creative, maybe in your introduction, like um, doing a scenario of some kind. Maybe I can see, but avoid, avoid this word in your essay. Now, as you can see, I have you a couple of times here. 
but as you'll notice this is part of a quote so you know I'm gonna leave the quotes alone direct quotes leave them how they are um, but as you can see these are this is the only place in my 10 page essay where I have the word you you just don't use that in academic writing unless you're doing something creative like I mentioned but um, try to really search for that word and do some rewording to eliminate it. Now we talked about clarity and conciseness a bit. So as your proofread, look for filler, um, look for repetitive phrasing, okay? So we talked about that a little bit. Um, look for negative construction, the word not. Um, sometimes this indicates that we're being a little extra wordy. Um, so here I have the word not, but I'm using it in kind of a correlative con uh, conjunction situation here, so I think that's okay. Um, but I do have not a lot in my paper. Five, uh, 17 instances. Um, feels that she does not have much control. Maybe I could say feels that she lacks control. See how I was able to just, I was able to just eliminate one, two, three, four words in place of one. So even I have plenty of places where I need to revise and be less wordy. And I'm definitely guilty of being a little bit too wordy in my writing. So here I've got, um, here I've got it again. So this tells me that I need to do some revisions and, and for some clarity and conciseness. Um, so the other thing that we talked about was your prepositions, overusing prepositions in your essay. So especially those little prepositions we forget are prepositions like words like for. Um, I'm going to put a space between and for be, just because it'll isolate the word for instead of find the letters for inside of other words. So yeah, so I have for a lot in my essay, 37 times. So I'm thinking that I need to, to look at some of those instances and revise a little. So for example, um, since I've got for a couple of times here, maybe this sentence is a little too wordy. However, if the WCCC's goal is for students to graduate, maybe I could change this in goal is to, yeah, I have, um, is, maybe I can change this into a verb, is to graduate students, and if, most WC students are not college brown, then perhaps for the most part, maybe I don't need this for the most part. Maybe that's a little wordy. Um, there we go. So there, I've just eliminated a couple of unnecessary prepositional phrases that probably made my writing wordy. So there's lots of other fours, and I'm not saying get rid of all of them. I'm just saying look at them a little more closely. The other one is of. Of is a popular um, preposition, and I've got a lot of those too. And I'm again not saying get rid of all of them, but just look more closely at where you've used them. Look, I have a bunch of them here. Um, so this just tells me I need to review some of these sentences and just make sure I'm not being wordy. Okay, so yeah, I definitely need to do some revising for clarity and conciseness. Okay, so those are just some tips then for you all as you are revising and putting the final touches on your essays. Please contact somebody from your class or my other class period and get somebody to proofread your paper. Um, you can read it a thousand times and miss and miss mistakes. It, it, it happens. You just sort of become blind to your own uh, errors. So reach out and help each other out. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions.